concepts. Right there, that graph tells you more uh, basic fundamentals as far as, far as 802.11 standard. 802.11 standard. And as far as wireless is concerned, this is all, this is some of the most fundamental things that you need to remember. When we're talking about clients connecting to an access point, which is very common, your home is a perfect example of BSS. Your home is a BSS, okay? And that's nice, we're talking nice words. So it's a basic <laughs> service set, okay? Basic service set, and we're talking nicely about your home. Your home is an access point and clients, yes? That is considered in the 802.11 standard, when we talk about wireless, that is considered a basic service set. If you have more than one basic service set, for example, this, art, this campus mm -hmm. has got multiple BSSs. It's got lots of access points. They're all interconnected. So the access points are interconnected with a distribution system, okay? We have a wireless controller in our uh, network closet that talks to all of our access points. So we are an extended service set, ESS. So most, anything beyond your home in a small business is going to be a BSS, a basic service set. Anything beyond a basic is going to be an extended service set. And that is really what, those are the big things that you want to know. ST, STA is your client. In other words, everybody that's a client, and I'm going to go into that in a minute, is considered STA. Those are the number one things you need to remember about 802.11. When you watch literature, when they're talking about this, when they're describing these concepts, they're going to be using the word BSS and ESS and STA. So you've got to know what those are in terms of the IEEE standard because everything else will make sense when you do that. So when they write literature, documentation, they expect you to understand what a BSS is, an ESS, and an STA. So this laptop is a STA. STA. If we had your home is basically a BSS, a larger campus that has more than one access point. Now, what if there was no distribution system? You just had lots of access points out. It would still be a BSS. BSS. The minute you connect those APs back to a central control system, now you've got an ESS. One apart is an ESS system, wireless design. Another important thing to remember, and you'll see this often in your CompTIA exams, where they're talking about infrastructure mode and ad hoc. Okay, we're going to talk about this. Infrastructure mode is what we typically think of access points and wireless, where we have an, a WAP, yes, a WAP. We've got a WAP and we've got clients. Notice the verbiage I'm using. Mm -hmm. When we talk about infrastructure mode, that would be really a BSS. You're gonna, the reason I'm using both of these terms is because CompTIA prefers to use the word infrastructure mode, whereas IEEE is going to call it a BSS. You have to know both. So if I said to you, Kevin, what is another term for BSS? You would say... Infrastructure mode. Ex excellent. So anytime we have an access point and we have clients connecting to an access point, that is considered infrastructure mode. That is also known as BSS. All right, so let's understand wireless radios. And here's the, here's the this was really um, opened my mind to understand wireless so much better. Here's a basic radio. This is what's really important to understand because today our mobile phones, our tablets, our laptops are totally capable of changing from we can find a laptop that's acting like this. I can take my laptop and make it like that. I can make my laptop do this. I can make my mobile phone do this. I can do all kinds of strange things with every device I own, my tablet, my mobile phone, my wireless access point. Why? The reason is, is because you have a radio. Whether you've got a radio in your mobile phone, 
or you've got a radio in your laptop, or you've got a radio in your desktop. The thing that's changeable is this. The software that runs your radio and your RF amplifier and your antenna is what can turn it into a client, an access point, a repeater, a client bridge, a repeater bridge, a bridge, or ad hoc. By simply changing the what? And that's exactly what we're doing today. Okay? Today what I'm going to do this morning, I'm going to quickly go through all of these modes that years ago, when wireless first came out, when you bought an access point, it was an access point forever. <laughs> when you bought your laptop, it was, a, it was a client forever. But today, that's all changed. Now, you can download software to run your radio and antenna, and you can be any one of these at any time. Yes, and we're going to take a look at that, okay? So the antennas uh, were before they could do anything? Basically, you bought it and you got it. Okay, like today, because today, in fact, today, look at your mobile phone. Now you can become a hotspot. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask you to explain that to me because once I go through this, my question to you is how does your mobile phone become a hotspot? So just think about that one. So most wireless devices allow you to change the function <laughs> of the wireless radio by simply changing the what? Yeah, look at DDWRT. I can take a, a wireless access point and by a pull down, I can turn my wireless access point into a client. In other words, the same thing that this laptop is doing, this laptop has got client software that's managing its radio. It looks for a what? What does client radio, what does the client software always do? It always is looking for one thing, an SSID. That's all it's looking for. It's looking for an access point. Think of it. This, this radio in here has got antennas up here in the, the, uh, the display. This radio software is client. It does only one thing. It's looking for an access point. And if it connects to it, it then connects to that access point and uses the landline that's connected to the access point. Okay? So I can take my router and say, abracadabra, quit acting like an access point. I want you to act just like my laptop. And now my access point is looking for a what? Another access point. You can also do client bridge, and I'm going to go through these. You can do ad hoc. You can become a repeater, and you can become a repeater bridge. So I can take any access point and totally change what it does. Totally. So today, by just changing what? Software. Software. Or download the next mobile app, and I can make my cell phone from a client that talks to a radio tower to now a device that will talk to the radio tower and will become an access point to anyone who connects to my Wi-Fi. And I'll bridge you, I'll bridge you, I'll connect a switch <laughs> between you and my cell phone tower. Is that not awesome? That is so cool. So now you've downloaded software that added a bridge, a switch, and an access point to your Wi-Fi. Your Wi-Fi no longer acts like a client. It now says, I'm an AP. Here's my SSID. Mm -hmm. Yes? Are you so software is doing everything. you still got the same old radio, the same old antenna, but you downloaded your new app, and you totally changed the way that radio works. That's pretty much yeah. changing the software, too. Huh? That's right. I'm thinking of security with everything you're saying. We'll get into security. Okay, so today, with today's wirelesses, we can take access points and make them anything. We can make mobile phones, make them anything. We can take just about anything that is software defined. <clears throat> and all of these are software defined. <clears throat> so if, obviously now, if you, down, if you buy a D-Link router, they're not going to want you to do this, a lot of this. If you download ASUS, they don't want you to do a lot of this. 
you have to really blow away their stuff and put on something like DDWRT. Mm -hmm. If you want this feature, because most people, Quan, most people would know what to do with it if they had it. Okay, but you guys do know what to do with it, and you're going to learn today. All right, so let's first talk about changing our, our radio. We're going to change our radio. We're going to change the software from an access point. Typically, if you go to most routers, what software do they have on? Access AP. They, they, they broadcast an SSID. Mm -hmm. You connect to them, and if you authenticate, if you give them the right passphrase, mm -hmm. you can authenticate and they'll connect you to the Ethernet network. When you buy an access point, so when you take an access point, like the ASUS router, the D-Link, the Linksys, by just changing the software, nine times out of ten, those companies ship what kind of software with the radios? Mm -hmm. Access points. That's it. And, and that makes sense. I mean, that's what you bought it for. But today, with, with open source software, you can now choose any one of these to turn that access point into something like a repeater, a repeater bridge, or ad hoc, or on. Let me show you an example of why would I take my access point that I just bought and turn it into a client bridge. Why would I do that? Why? You're trying to connect to another access point. Or, I mean, I don't know. All right, so let me give you a real life man cave reason, okay? Because <laughs> you guys will get this. Ladies will not get this, but the guys will get this. All right, so here, here we go. <laughs> Brianna will get this. All right, here we go. We got a big house. Real nice interior. The wife's got it all decorated, all that. When you, um, you, got, your, you got your bright house connection in here at the back. This is your little office back here, your little den, uh, your cave. And you got, you got your access point here. You got your antenna. And you got your little switch ports back here, and this is where your computer, your monitor, all your good stuff in. But, being the male that you are, here is the main living room. Okay? And you got your high definition TV, you've got your PlayStation or your Xbox game, you got all, and um, you want to get. You've, you've asked your wife to run a cable through the floor, <laughs> across the rugs, and she said no. <laughs> well, I don't know what is wrong with her, but she just does not like that Cat6 cable running across the floor, even if it's under that rug. So that, that was out. Uh, so the cable across the floor from your, your den back into the, the TV room is not going to fly. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to buy a nice, this is a AC router, it's got uh, 802.11 AC, and you're going to buy another AC router, set it right here, and this is going to be an 802.11 AC router, and you're going to remove the software. This was typically, the software on this was what? AAP. But that's not going to work for you, because you don't need two access points. You need a wireless. Uh, you need a wireless cable. Yes, mm -hmm. I need a wireless cable a bridge. between my home entertainment mm -hmm. and this access point that connects me to the internet. Yes, mm -hmm. so I can get Netflix, Hulu, etc. to my machine. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe out the AP software and I'm going to put in a client bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, watch what happens. So, here's my access point. The radio is now going to connect to this access point over here. And we're going to connect at AC speeds. So, let's say we get 800 megabits per second, yes? So, now I have my, my, my uh, wireless wire, yes? Mm -hmm. But I've got ports back here, and that's what I want to connect my TV to, my PlayStation, my Xbox, and that's where I needed this piece. Everyone see that? Mm -hmm. I needed the bridge, because I needed that switch to be connected to this wire, this, this invisible wire, okay? One that the wife will buy. 
will allow in the house. So now I can hook up my TV, my Xbox, whatever, whatever, my Blu-ray, everybody there? Mm -hmm. And I hook them into those switch ports. Now everybody over here, all my home entertainment system is connected to the same subnet as my router. In other words, they're all one LAN because I used a what? A bridge. They're all in one LAN. So the IP, they get, uh, my Blu-ray gets an IP address from the DHCP server. My TV gets an IP address from the DHCP server. Does everybody see? So I want a client bridge. A real practical use of a client bridge. So I'm using two quote, off-the-shelf access points, changing the software from AP to client bridge, and now I've got, a, I've got an 800 megabit wire back to my access point. Cool? Got to move the cable. Wife's happy, I'm happy, we've got a good connectivity, and, and depending, on the, depending on the radios, you could go one gigabit connection, which would be really good. All you got to do is get a what here? Gig coming in. We got to get a gig coming in, <laughs> and we got a gig wire connection, and we could have really, really nice. Okay, we could have 4K streaming. Theoretical one. Theoretical. Are you going to say your house? But that's that's exactly how you do it. So there's where you can see we can take an off-the-shelf access point. Say, quit being an access point. I want you to be a client bridge. Mm -hmm. Voila, you got a one gigabit. So that way you don't have to plug in the network cable in. No, no. I, and I, and I, uh, you say, well, Mr. V, what about those uh, power plugs where you plug them into your electrical? Um, I have Line. tried those. Line, that, you can, you that you plug them into your electrical you and you can uh, send... Uh, um, 802.11, I mean, you can send Ethernet through your power line, power line adapters, but I find them very yeah. funky. I have, I have played with probably three generations, multiple vendors, and I've never been happy. It depends on the wire in your house, but I went from an old house, tried it there, to a brand new house, tried it there, and still had the same funky results. So, like some some new houses. Well, mine's from 2005, and, and it has Cat5 cable running through the phone lines. Mm -hmm. so yes. What you could do is yeah, I have Cat5 cable in my phone lines too. Yeah. So, yeah. but, but the too. problem is, uh, I have voice over IP, so I need them for my yeah. phone. That also runs my security system and a bunch of other stuff. Okay. So if I didn't use a phone system and I just used wireless cordless phones, then I could totally get, I could use my Cat5 for moving some data around. Yeah. But does everyone see a, a, a perfect use for client bridge? Yeah. So basically, I'm just telling this access point quit. So there's lots of great reasons why uh, different uh, software makes sense for different situations. So let's talk about some of the other ones. Now. One of the most commonly talked about are wireless repeaters, and that's where you're extending your line, and they're also called wireless extenders. So you see them, you see both words used. Here's the thing that you want to remember. You can go ahead and tell this access point, quit being an access point. I want you instead to so install software on the radios that now uh, does what's called repeater mode. Now notice that these access points have what on? The ACP and what? Yeah. So this one can be on a different subnet and still connect to this and then it's repeated back over to this LAN over here. This is a local area network. So this can have its own subnet, its different IPs, and it will then be extended and connected via this wireless repeater. The same thing with this. So remember with wireless repeaters, DHCP, D DHCP is on and NAT is on. These can be on separate subnets. So another another view of that. Now, what's the big disadvantage of repeaters? This allows you to go further away. You can extend your LAN, but what is the biggest problem? The biggest problem is right here. Right here between these two, you lose one half of your bandwidth. So when these guys are talking, 
half of your bandwidth is lost between these two. So that's the big problem with repeaters is if this is an AC and let's say, uh, you know, if you had a gigabit connection, okay, we can probably live with 500 megabits, okay, that probably will be doable. But if you've got an 802.11G and you've got 54 megabits, <laughs> okay, <laughs> these people over here are crying, okay, they're not going to be watching Netflix, okay, they're not going to be doing a whole lot except email, slowly. So depending on, so, so think about it, if I have AC routers, if I've got AC access points, uh, I can go ahead and put this in repeater mode and I can probably live with that half loss. So it's better to have a, um, a bridge than a repeater? I'm, I'm going to talk about a repeater bridge in a minute, okay, I'm going to talk about that. So right now I'm talking about repeaters, repeaters. NAT has to be on, DHCP has to be on, everybody connected to these repeaters can be on different subnets. The biggest problem is with older technology, uh, you really take a beating right here. Now, a lot of hotels do this. This is very common with hotels. When I used to travel and I would go to a hotel and they would say free wireless, <laughs> free wireless meant awful wireless. That's what that meant. Just scratch out free, put horrible, frustrating. Ten megs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because what they did was they put one access point on one floor, yeah. and they used repeaters to extend it across all the rooms. And of course, I probably got on the room that was.